He may have my soul. But he doesn't have my spirit. What? Lost one family! I ain't gonna lose another one! What? It's fantastic. The bigger you are, the faster you burn. <laughs> What are you talking about? How did this thing not understand gravity? I'm Neary, and this one's a big problem. Movies need heart. No, not that, damn it. You are the light of my life. My precious son. My little Star Lord. Love, Mom. That's more like it. Let's make it clear, being distracted is fine. I've done it, we've all watched a movie just to be taken out of our lives for a couple of hours. What is this? Or days. But having something to say and being entertaining, eliciting emotion and transporting us, those aren't mutually exclusive. But in an industry increasingly designing films rather than creating them, superhero movies all too often eat their own tails trying to succeed. That's gross. Let's look at how it falls apart. You take an existing property, because it has a fan base and track record, it's a safer bet than something brand new. You need it safe because you're gonna get into bed with advertising, product placement, toys, clothes, and everything else. <laughs> Not now. And that means means you'll need to advertise everywhere. Everywhere. You hear me? Everywhere. So you've got hundreds of millions of dollars tied up in this movie. You're driving off a cliff and hoping the car has wings. Because all of this is before you've written one shitty page of a script. The movie machine is moving before it knows where it's going or what's powering it. Probably children's tears. So the budget has to be big enough to create something spectacular enough to fulfill all those demands and satisfy all those partners. And get as many people in the door because of the trailer as possible. I mean, you think it's hard getting one partner to decide on what you guys are going to eat for dinner? What do you want? It's not that simple. What it's do you want? Imagine having 12 wives, all investing millions of dollars. So this Mormon mega corporation narrows what can and can't be made. Wow. Which leaves us here. I know, right? And yeah, it's just a movie. But look, I'm gonna be a little honest here. Gay! Stories are who we are. As a species. Culture is simply shared stories and references. I can make a joke because we're sharing language and knowledge yeah, I'm not. and using content that we can connect through. Slow ahead. I can go slow ahead. Come on down and chump some of this shit. But the bigger the budget, the narrower the gap for a director and writer to voice their view of the world. Which is feckin' stupid. The greatest movies of our lives are because of their voice. A director sharing his interests, a writer opening his heart and actors giving everything to the character. A common term among writers is show, don't tell. Also, I'll do it tomorrow, which simply means don't have someone tell us the hero is really brave, show it. The worst of the worst. Show, don't tell. Because if you show us a great story, if you show us a film with questions to ask, opinions to give, something to say about the world or people, then I can tell you that you're going to make an impact. And it might not be perfect, but it's better to aim for perfection than try and get better than shit. It works in any medium, but comic book movies should be the most open to giving people a voice despite how generic they can seem to the studios. I honestly can't remember this guy's name after two videos using this clip. And we're living in a golden age of comic book movies. Hopefully you're alive listening to this. Don't say, we have to support them. Nothing lasts forever. This wave will pass like all genres, no matter how much money you piss away on it. Don't, don't, don't piss away money. But now they're so bankable. Now they're so in focus is the best chance we have to ask for more. Don't settle for token films and hand-me-down executives thinking they're doing us a favor. Comic fans made it possible for this era of films. The support and love they shared and nurtured have kept these characters alive for nearly a hundred years and counting. And not just comic fans, cartoons, books, anything where the fans make the difference. Because now the tech is where it's at. Ah, oh, sweet. Merciful crap. Now the money is pouring in, we need to expect the best from the things we love. Not just replications that pander to the source material, but something that's only possible in film. Make something work on screen. Don't cheat and copy what works on the page. Because there's no such thing as a comic book movie. No such thing as a drama or a comedy. It can be anything. 
These masks and costumes that seem so goofy are not a liability, but part of the power. They give representations to those daily struggles that might be harder to express in a normal film. Fear, loneliness, morality, responsibility, kindness, acceptance, courage, jogging, shawarma. Wait, wait, I've gone too far. Costumes and capes are a bright flame that the whole world can gather around, regardless of their place, passions or peoples. And here a campfire story elevated to new heights. Superhero films are bigger and bolder by default. You don't need to worry about that. Take that long proven magic and tie it to a writer and director with something to say beneath it all. It's like the damn comics themselves. The Mask is a big blockbuster, but the secret identity is something emotional and real and honest behind it all. So what's my philosophical bullshit got to do with this idiot or this one? How about Hal Jordan, who already has the most powerful weapon in the universe, doesn't just mindlessly battle the bad guy. It's a frickin' cloud. But actually overcomes fear and inspires others and doesn't just piss off the space. This creature is a bajillion years old and lives in fucking space. How did it not understand gravity? This film, oh man. It's just generic, it's just made by a committee of people sitting around a room thinking they know what's best for others. No one can make a good film with an origin story, saving the girl and beating the bad guy in a big third act. It just can't be done. It, oh, okay, 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 hang on, wait, wait, no, wait. Oh, hello. You don't count. You don't count. You're, you're R-rated and self-referential. No one can make a straight film like this that, oh, balls, wait, no. Now, hang on, wait, you're, you're Batman. I'm Batman. It's easy for you to make a billion dollars. Hello darkness, my old friend. You don't count. Sorry to disappoint. No one can make a straight ahead, non-dark film with this premise because... God damn it. God damn it. So maybe the problem isn't the plot. Maybe it's how it plays out. You gotta help me save my world. And how hollow it is. If one thing in this movie should have been fixed, it would have been this moment. I feel your fear growing. This is the entire core of the film and the character. The fight where all of Hal Jordan's fears become manifest and he has to inspire others. Let's look at what you're working with. A universal police force who doesn't think Hal is ready in his training, yet their combined might wasn't any use against the danger. So then, naturally, let's have the whiny, unmotivated, pissing his pants because his daddy got killed, making no emotional choices, idiot overpowered the creature all by himself. It's like Danielson kicking the shit out of Mr. Miyagi. Yuki Morita was nominated for an Academy Award for his performance. Ralph Macchio showed up. Hit those key elements properly. Police, how about serve and protect, not whine and moan? That isn't me. Mate, seriously, you killed them. Parallax draws its power from fear. Feeding on the fear of others, he grew larger, more powerful. Including if it's manifested as anger and aggression. Here's my choice. Teach the lesson that fear won't go away if we get angry. And instead of fighting it, you take this half-assed moment and make Hal create images for other people. Like a teddy bear. Seriously, a teddy bear. Or a friend. Or a loved one. Instead of using the ring as a weapon like the others did. It becomes a way of inspiring and uniting people. Instead of offense and violence, he chooses to defend others. He already has the most powerful weapon in the universe. So what he does is he creates things that give people strength. He has to will the ring to create these as a standoff. He fights with the people, not above them like the other lanterns. And in their courage, he gets stronger. Then the other lanterns can arrive and start blasting the shit out of Parallax. And Hal can have a freak out and say, what are you doing? Stop, we have to let him attack us. And if he kills us, Earthman, then we die. But it won't win. And in the finish, they don't just blast him away. They defeat fear by working together and accepting it. And because it's just a comic book movie, you could have shown that in a very distinct way. Brightest day. Blackest night. No evil shall escape my sight. Let those who worship evil's might beware my power. Green Lantern's life. With Parallax defeated by being split up and absorbed into all the rings. Hal shows his worth and value, the lanterns grow because of him, Parallax is defeated by his own flaws, and through our hero's bravery, teamwork, and character growth. Not because of a giant boxing glove, or gravity. 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 It was almost there. I know, right? And then the executives took it away. Be true to the characters, and you'll get a better story. Be true to the director's vision, and you'll get a better story. 
be true to the story and yep, you guessed it, you'll get a better story. I've seen things you people wouldn't believe. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You ain't heard nothing yet. You said I was to do Great tales tend to make bigger profits, but more importantly, they make better people and a stronger shared culture. There is no place like home. Stories change us. Stories lift us up and transform us. And I swear on my soul that a good story is more valuable than a quick profit. We're all in this together and we're all relying on each other. So if you aim for more than trying to distract us, you might actually influence things with your art. Prosper. your passion, or your point of view. Once upon a time we dreamed, and that dream became a story and we shared that story. Dreams, ideas, language and theories and inspirations, all the same. Tell us a story, show us your heart, and you might just change our world. That's right. That's right. Hey guys, I'd like to show you all how grateful I am for you for watching, but I think that's illegal, so I'm just going to say thanks again for checking it out. If you want to listen to our podcast, you know where we are, Rant and Bollocks on iTunes. And if you have any stories you want to share with me, some of your favorite movies, if you want to give me a like, a dislike, a comment, or a share, or you want to contact us, go right ahead. Because as always, have a great day, and take care of each other. God damn it! Hear the music.